Welcome to Network Nuts YouTube channel and I am Alok Shwastava. Welcome you once again. In this video, it's going to be a very short one. Let me tell you this. And I'm not going to show you any labs or anything. Just focusing on the concept. So we will be learning about how the scheduler works. Now, prerequisite before you go ahead and watch the video is you should be aware of what is Kubernetes. Now, normally people think that it is the uh, once we give the command uh, to run an application it first goes to the api server as we oh sorry the scheduler as we know that the scheduler is the one who is responsible for creating the pods so you have a big cluster right and in the cluster it is the scheduler who is responsible for making sure that where the pod will go that is the job of the scheduler right now what happens actually let's understand this so we normally give the command by supplying the command uh, cube cube cuttle that's all right that is what we do so the moment we give a command cube cuttle deploy and whatever my application is right so this is the command which i am normally going to give so the moment i give this command the command goes to the api server right now here is the small uh, issue normally people think that whatever the command i had given here cube cuttle create hyphen f that goes to the api server first no it didn't goes to the api what api does see kubernetes works like it is a declarative application right so what api does let's suppose in this uh, deployment i intend to create two pods right so means a, a deployment will be created then a replica set will be created and then two pods will be created so i will be giving the command to the api server because it is a declarative language api server instantly writes that thing in the etcd we know etcd is my data store right so those things get written in the etcd that the user wanted to create these things that got written inside the etcd but the pods are still not created right pods are created by whom pods are created by the controller manager right so now what what happens it is the controller manager's job to create the pod it is being mentioned in the etcd first please understand this they have been written in the etcd that user wants to create this Right? So that is the job of the controller manager to create the pods. Now, but controller manager creates it, it puts up an entry there, but what it does then, it marks those pods as pending because no node is assigned yet, right? No node is assigned to these pods. So it is being created in the etcd, then it is being marked as pending. Now, any pending pod which the status is showing as pending automatically get added to the scheduler queue now here comes our scheduler so these two pods will be added in the scheduler queue that scheduler it is your job to find the best node so they are already in the etcd please understand they are already in the etcd but they are pending now it is a job of the scheduler to find the best node where to run the pod now how scheduler chooses that that's the job that is what the video is right now scheduling process is divided into two parts first is the scheduling part in which the scheduler will choose the best node and second is binding part binding means it will go back to the etcd and update the etcd please understand here till now the etcd it is pending right so binding means when the scheduler has find the best node let's suppose node one so it will remove this and write here node 1. It is running on node 1. Remove this and write here node 2. Let's say, right? Node 2 here. But how it chooses, that is what we intend to understand. So two step process, scheduling and binding. Scheduling is finding the best node and binding obviously means writing that node entry and updating the etcd. That is the job. Now, scheduling is again divided into multiple parts scheduling normally is divided into two two parts filtering and scoring right now filtering means filtering relevant nodes Rem just use those nodes which can be used there might be nodes which cannot be used 
based on different parameters. Filtering is that. So in case of filtering, the Kubernetes scheduler uses functions known as predicates. And then scoring. Scoring means if I have got a couple of nodes, which one to use to deploy the pod means the best node, right? That is known as priorities. So let's understand this, right? Filtering and scoring. So let's take an example. I'll try to give you a simple example. Let's suppose this is my cluster here. Certain machines are have got GPUs, right? Certain machines don't have GPUs, no problem, even, right? Even though those machines are blank. Now let's suppose we intend to uh, deploy a pod which is asking for a GPU or any other um, requirement like a SSD storage or a certain kind, uh, certain uh, uh, amount of memory, whatever. In my case, I'm talking about the GPU. So what the scheduler run? Now, if, if you see here, couple of nodes are already running full capacity, like node E is having GPU, but it is running full capacity, right? It is also running at the full capacity. Node A is running 50% of the capacity. Node C is there, which has GPU, but it doesn't have any workload. Wonderful. Now, what happens? The first thing the scheduler does is what? The filtering, right? Remove the nodes which cannot be used. It will remove out those nodes which don't have GPUs, even though they are blank, right? So scheduler in first phase will discard all the nodes that doesn't have the GPUs. That is the filtering phase. Now, second is the scoring, right? So now the scheduler says, okay, among these nodes, right among these nodes this machine is running 100% of the of the capacity this is also running at 100% of, of the capacity this is running 50% of the capacity and this has got no workload currently it is running 0% of the capacity so means this machine has got maximum resources available so this will be chosen one right so node c will be chosen to deploy your application in this case that is the scoring right so Finding the best node, obviously any machine which is fully uh, used as having lower scores, right? So node E and node F has got lower score, node A still has got a lower score, but node C has got highest score. That So the node C will be chosen in my case. There are can a lot of uh, like filters which you can use. So by default, I have got 13 predicates. The, the Kubernetes uses 13 predicates like nodes, unscheduled, right? Volume bind, pod per resources. I'm not going into this, but we, we can control for uh, one enterprise, a certain attribute is more important, certain uh, for, and for a different enterprise, a, di a different attribute might be important. So among these are the filters. Then comes the scoring. Now scoring can be used means again, how to decide again, I've got the Kubernetes has got 13 functions. Like I'll give you one example. Uh, I can control image locality. Now please understand. So let's say what is image locality? If you can read here, that means I will prefer a node that already has got the container image downloaded means even though even though the other node might have got full resources free, but I will still prefer so I can control my scoring. That means what? Let us, let us go back to the previous slide. Let's suppose this is the case, right? This is the case. So, suppose we intend to run Nginx application, right? Now let's say Nginx is already running here. This is already running Nginx, right? And this machine, because this is not running any workload, so it it has got no image in the local hard disk, right? Not no image in local storage. I hope you will agree. But this already has got the Nginx image downloaded here, right? Nginx is available here. So I can use those functions. I can use it image locality means I will prefer a node which already has got the image. So in case I use that, that means let the node C having the highest score, but because the image is already available in the local hard disk here, right? So that means if I run the same application, so I am also running the same application, 
right so if i run the same application so that means in this case if i deploy my application here right on this machine so this machine need not to download the image that saves my internet visit that saves a lot of bandwidth right rather than deploying it here because if i deploy it here there is no image then obviously the image need to be downloaded first you all know how the uh, things work in kubernetes so you can control all these that which scoring i will uh, is is uh, like having more priority for me right what is more important for me so scoring can be controlled like image locality priority affinity anti affinity right balanced resource allocation means if if i choose this that means you should prefer the node which are under utilized now the point is can i control this all these things 100% yes if you had gone through the kubernetes training like ck or cks you already know these things node selectors node affinity anti affinity tain installation scheduler uh, profile using all this i am able to control that which node i intend my workload to run on but again that is out of the bounds for this course for this video the idea is you need to understand how things work first it got written in the etcd the pods they are marked as pending then the request then those pods are added to the scheduler scheduler uses filtering and the scoring to find the node and once the node is updated that okay now my pod is running on say node c right then the node c entry will be updated here so once the node c is selected then it will be removed and it is being referred as node c and this is also referred as node c that is the binding part right so i hope you have understood how the scheduler works and if there was any confusion on what happens first so first the etcd got written but the pods are marked as pending then the pods are given to the scheduler scheduler uses all these functions and the predicates to find the best node once the best node is chosen it goes back and update the status from pending to running do share your your comments and like it subscribe it keep on learning guys i will be seeing you soon thank you very much take care jai hind